at a time when pretty much most of the only 8K content you can find comes in the form of two gaming consoles that, let's face it, are hard to buy. It is a valid question. Should you buy an 8K TV? I mean, cable providers are still streaming in HD mostly. Blu-ray content is only sometimes found in 4K, and the same goes for movies on iTunes. And hey, only half of our content here on YouTube is in 4K. The answer is actually two things. The first is that if you're like the average American that replaces their TVs every seven to eight years and you bought a TV today, can you imagine the idea of remaining with full HD or 4K until 2028? And especially at a time when modern game consoles are already adopting 8K, YouTube videos, at least some of them, can now be seen in 8K, and even phones are also capable of it with the new Snapdragon chipsets. The second is that TVs are actually smarter today than they were before. So let me tell you why going future-proof is not something you should worry about anymore. This is the 2020 75-inch LG NanoCell 8K TV. Probably one of the coolest and most beautiful products that I've used in 2020, and also proof that WebOS was definitely ahead of its time when it launched. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive into our full review. I'm not gonna lie, like many of you, I was skeptical of adopting 8K. I mean, it took me a while to adopt 4K because I feel that companies still don't give it the importance that it deserves. Still, for me, my biggest concern was would it be able to scale properly? I mean, think about it. This is 16 times 1080p. I mean, would my existing content look well? Because I'm kind of old school. And is it worth the quite high asking price? My quick answer is yes to most of these questions, but let me begin this video by telling you what you get and what I like about this TV. First, it is massive. And not just because of the obvious display size, but really its design. The unboxing experience also is kind of epic. I do recommend you get help for the process since this TV weighs almost 100 pounds. And then there are a few important things to consider. The first is that there is no flexibility for the feet at the ends. If you don't have furniture for a 75 inch TV, you will have to order something, which was actually my case. That said, I've never really had a TV with really good compartments for cable management at the back. This one actually offers solutions that are pretty slick and easy to apply and remove. Now, what I mean by design is the fact that even from the sides, this TV is thick, which is something you won't notice from the front as these bezels are razor sharp. I'm not gonna bore you with the technical specifics of 8K and how those pixels compare to 4K. My buddy Tom the Tech Chap has a full technical rundown on this TV that I'm just going to link to. For me as a consumer, I'll tell you that this is the best experience that I've ever had with an LCD TV, and it should for its price. Seriously, I do consider this to be the everything you could think of in a TV package because the specifications and what this TV can do are crazy. It's powered by LG's A9 Gen 3 AI 8K processor that enables true 8K at 7680 by 4320 resolution. It runs natively at 120 hertz refresh rate, though with the assistance of TrueMotion 240. All this allows it to support Cinema HDR, Dolby Vision, HDR10, HLG, Dolby Vision IQ, which is their latest version, HDR dynamic tone mapping, kitchen sink, bathtub, you name it. The reproduction of black colors is seriously epic for an IPS LCD given its full array dimming pro, and the same story happens with the rest of the color gamut. I mean, we've praised LG repeatedly for accurate colors in the monitors we've reviewed. Even viewing angles are fantastic, which is something odd in a TV that avoids reflections as well as this one does. I'd say it's pretty close to OLED, but you also won't get the downsides of OLEDs like burn-in for the price. And then the speakers are an insane 60 watts, with the woofer alone being 20 watts. Small flagships. It's as if the requirement to get the best. And probably my favorite element here is just how many connectivity options you have, which is usually a problem with most TVs, from Wi-Fi AC to multiple HDMI 2.1 ports to lots of USB ports, to audio out, to shower, to dishwasher. It's all here. Now, what I focus on most is the user experience, and there are a couple of reasons why this has become my personal favorite TV. 
The first is WebOS. Guys, LG has kept it alive for quite some time with their TVs, and I love it. Usually smart TVs are clunky or pull you out of your content to change the selection, while this one allows you to navigate the menus even when you're playing something. Yes, the second reason is actually how WebOS allows this remote to be different. Instead of having to navigate around menus, this behaves pretty much like a mouse, where you can go to different sections of the user interface quicker. Third is that voice recognition in this control makes it even easier to move around through content. I'm not really much of a fan of how this voice service responds, but honestly, it's so good I really don't care. And you can also connect this TV to the Google Assistant or Amazon's A Assistant to have it serve content. Fourth is AirPlay 2 and HomeKit support. This is pretty much a full-blown Apple TV when you want it to be, so you can save that money, up to the point of serving as a hub for smart devices with LG's Thank You user interface. Fifth is the fact that if you're thinking about cutting the cord, this is your TV. I'm a YouTube TV guy particularly, but then there's the insane amount of support for third-party services and applications, and even LG's own live channels if you wanna try something extra for free. And then like most TVs in this category, there are a ton of UI elements designed to make this more of a piece of art that you can hang on your wall, which is also optional and easy to find in the UI. And then seven, yes, this is also the ideal TV for gaming, but I'll admit I'm pretty much more of a Nintendo guy, so I would not be the best judge until those new consoles arrive at my doorstep. That said, eight is the fact that I feel that this is what makes this TV special. LG's upscaling is so good that you won't be able to tell if you're playing on a Nintendo Switch at 1080p, watching a movie at 4K, or even playing live TV that barely maxes at a fraction of what this TV can do. The TV's smart AI is able to detect what's being portrayed and then make it feel like if the resolution offered is native. This is why I say you shouldn't worry about going future-proof with this TV. I mean, even with the added pixels, this TV does an amazing job at playing pretty much anything. As a user of LG monitors, I really wanted to try the experience on the big screen and see what the company could do, and I will admit that I'm not disappointed. That being said, just like with every product, there is no such thing as a perfect TV, and I've got a couple of reasons why I'm mixed with it. The first is precisely the remote. You're not really obligated to use the mouse-like function, and that's great, because you'll find yourself holding this remote in odd ways sometimes, as detection of gestures is not what I'd call the most accurate. Second, and still with this remote, is just the button layout. I mean, I don't mind the shortcuts for third-party services, but having the back button so close to them has landed me on Netflix more often than I'd like. Third is that even with Google Assistant support, either I'm missing something or I just don't find a way to cast to it. It could be that AirPlay blocks it, but it's the reason I've been using Xiaomi's Mi TV stick that gets you full-blown Android TV as an alternative as well. Fourth is that even if WebOS is my favorite user interface, it's not necessarily the best. Ever so slightly, it would get clunky, sometimes it would lose connectivity, but the reason why I'm mixed and I don't consider this something I don't like is because the amount of times it happens is very rare. And then fifth is that, well, my testing of this TV was mostly about how good it could upscale content, because aside from my footage on some Android phones or some YouTube videos, options for 8K are still limited. To conclude, let's go back to my initial premise. Should you buy an 8K TV in 2020 or 2021? And my answer remains the same. I believe you should. I mean, if you can afford a TV that already supports the latest gaming consoles, that already supports the trends of YouTube, and that can actually support what phones can do right now, which digital cameras are already starting to do in the consumer market, then why not? If it can scale your content, even if it's not 8K, in a way where you really won't be able to tell the difference, if it can also do so while providing one of the best viewing experience I've had, and also while providing one of the smartest user interfaces I've had on a TV, the question to you is, why wouldn't you? Yes, the price is a huge hurdle. Even if right now you can find crazy discounts available for this TV already. Also, do a price check and notice that 8K at 75 inches is not any cheaper than this. What I'm gonna say is that I have no problem in recommending LG 75-inch 8K Nano Cell. I feel that it is a really good investment, the experience has been fantastic, and if you think about it, you will be prepared for whatever trends happen within the next seven to eight years if you, again, follow the typical trends of how consumers buy TVs and hold on 
to them. Let us know what you think about this TV in the comments down below. And while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow me on my personal handles to see me be spoiled by this thing. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.